Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, you came to my rescue. Hey, nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you, God. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody, nobody but you. Come on, clap your hands and say, Nobody but you. Nobody but you. Nobody but you. When I was in trouble, when I was in trouble, you came to my rescue. You came to my rescue. I don't wanna say, Nobody but you. morning oh god thank you so much for being so kind thank you for your blessings thank you for your power Amen. thank you for your glory Amen. and father we want to thank you for waking us up this morning for we are so grateful and we are so privileged to come before your presence this morning i ask so god that your word will come so powerfully to heal the sick to set the afflict free, deliver the affliction. The afflicted, deliver them, oh God. May your word cause the unbelief to believe. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we bless you, oh God. We command every spirit that is not of God under our feet this morning. We step on them and we walk over them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let the entrance of your word, O oh God, bring change Amen. in Jesus' precious mighty name. At the end of this, we will never forget to give a praise Amen. and honor your mighty name Amen. in Jesus' precious mighty name. And let everything that has breath will raise your voice and shout to the glory of God. Shout.
yes, Lord. Please be seated in the presence of God. I just want to thank God for allowing us here. And may God bless you for coming. Those who are allowed, we are just few people, 10 people. Because of the government instructions, we cannot have 10, more than 10 in the building. So we are 10 here. And those watching us from live stream, from YouTube, from Facebook, may God bless you for tuning in this morning. Um, we are going to continue on our subject power power 14 days of what power. power power to finish well power to finish the year very well and this morning i want to speak on the topic under the power of a uh, power to finish well power to move forward can somebody say power to move forward power to move forward come on if you can type it on the bottom co um uh comment uh, power to move forward power, power to, move to move forward, forward. Let's say it one more time. Power to move forward. Power to move forward. Ah, uh, come on, say it like you mean it. Power to move forward. Power, Power to, to move, move forward. forward. As chapter number one, verse eight, the Bible said, "But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria." And unto the uttermost part of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to believe this morning that God has released his power upon us. Amen. But the problem with us is we are not using the power of God. Uh, the problem with believers is that the power, the, the body of their power is, is down. And this morning I came to charge your power. I came to revive that power inside you in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody shout amen? Amen. amen. Exodus chapter number 11, 14 verse 15. Exodus 14, 15. Bible said, if you can, you can write all this quotation down. And those who are watching us from Facebook, uh, please do me a big favor. Share this page. Like this uh, live stream. Um, like it. Share it. And let guess, let's get somebody to uh, have, get the opportunity to, to watch this service. May God bless you. As so the chapter number 14 verse 15, Bible said, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Tell the people to get moving. Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through and middle of the sea on the dry ground. Hallelujah. Now this is another demonstration of the power of God that when Moses went to Pharaoh and said God said let my people go finally Pharaoh gave up and then Moses took the Israelites and when they came across the Red Sea they didn't know what to do. Moses spoke to the children of Israel and said, come down the God that we serve is so powerful to do the impossible. Then here we can see God speaking to Moses and said, Moses 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 the Lord said to him why are you crying? He was worried. Somebody is worried this morning. Somebody is going through problems this morning. In fact, the whole world, we are crying. We are walking through hell. Corona or COVID-19 is torturing us. But the Lord said, why are we crying? Why are you crying? Why are we crying? Tell the people to, to get moving. Now I came to speak to somebody. You are moving forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't like your attitude this morning at all. Say, I am moving forward in the name of Jesus. I am moving it forward doesn't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what COVID-19 will cause. It doesn't matter what the sick, whatever sickness will come upon my life. I am moving forward in the name of Jesus. 
Can someone shout, I receive the power receive to power. move forward in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I receive the anointing the to anointing. move forward in the name of Jesus. Then name of Jesus. we hear, we see here in verse 16, pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so that the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry land. Now here we see God departing the Red Sea into two and the children of Israel was able to walk in the sea like they are walking on desert. Isn't God amazing? Outstanding. He's wonderful. Can somebody shout? He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Shout it like you mean it. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Second Chronicles chapter number 20 verse 1. We are going to do verse 1 to, to 4 but I'm going to preach through 1 to probably maybe 24 or whatever. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter number 20 verse 1 to 4. Bible said, after this, the armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, Ammonites, and some of the Mionites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are ready as they are ready at Hazazon, Tema. Three, Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and, be, and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. I love this part. I love this part. I love this part. He also ordered everyone in judah to do what come on come on come on come on let's preach together if you know it just type it just type it and type it on say something say something he yeah let, let's read together he also ordered everyone in judah to do what to begin what fasting so people from all the towns of judah came to jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Now, any time that man goes through any kind of problem, the first thing that you have to think of is to look up to God for his guidance. After that, you must prepare yourself to wait upon the Lord. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Oh, yes. Any time that you go through hell, you go through problems, you go through any life challenges, you must set yourself apart and seek the face of God. Because the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like an eagle. The Bible said, they will fly and not be wearied. They will walk and not faint. I came to speak to somebody. Even though we are going through pandemic, but the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will grant you power. The Lord will give you the power to survive this difficult time. Can I hear somebody shout? I hear you. I hear you. Amen. Now, I want to speak about the five ways to move forward in the power of God. Then, I will continue to use this scripture as we go along. But before I proceed, allow me to uh, give you a little background of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. The Bible said that three giants were coming against him. And he did not do anything but to seek the face of God and declare a fast to the nation that let us fast and wait upon the Lord. Don't you think that if Canada was able to come together and said, can we fast and wait upon the Lord? Don't you think we'll be able to get rid of this sickness? Oh, look at you. Hallelujah. Last time I was talking about this, that even Africans are doing it. Hallelujah. But we are more living in a modern world that we rely on technology 
and we rely on the strength of the country. Now, glory be to God that this pandemic is a big example for every developed nation and every country that thinks that they are very smart or they are equipped with equipment that they can fight any enemy. Now look, Americans can stand and say, I can fight Afghanistan. I can fight anybody from the Middle East and I will win. But let's ask them this morning, are they able to fight COVID-19 and won that battle? The battle is the Lord. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Am I talking to this somebody this morning? You see, they have defeated. And the last time, ladies and gentlemen, I checked, I, Americans have recorded over 250,000 people who have died because of COVID-19. Where are their technology? Where are their strength? Where are all these ammons, all these equipments that they use to fight? Were they able to use this equipment to defeat COVID-19? No. Hallelujah. So we don't, we don't joke with this God. Somebody said we don't joke with this God. And don't joke, ever joke with this God. Amen. So here, Jehoshaphat seek the face of God. And Bible said, I will walk you through. We will see what will happen. Amen. I don't want to finalize the, the sweet story here. But let's look at five ways to move forward in the power of God. Now, if you want to be so strong and move in the power of God, you must make sure that these things that we are going to walk through this morning, you are inside, you are in. You are in. Number one, know your God. Can somebody shout, know your God? I don't like your attitude this morning at all. Can you shout, know your God? Or say it like you mean it. Know your God. Know the God that you are serving. No, you see, no, no, no. Americans don't know the God that they are serving. So they have failed. Not America, we don't know the God we are serving. So we have been defeated by COVID-19. Hello? Whether you like it or not, I'll say it. Amen. You must know your God. The Bible said, they that know their God shall be what? Shall be strong and shall do what? Exploits. Are you here with me? Those who do not know their God shall be weak and suffer. That is why we are going through this hell. We are suffering. But let's look here. Verse number 3. Can you put it on the screen for me? Verse number 3. Bible said, Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So the man knew about God. So instead of an army coming against him, he did not call for any help from any man, but he lifted up his eyes onto the hills. That is where our help coming from. Our help coming from the most high God, the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God, the great army. Am I talking to somebody here? Ah, he is the man of the battle. He won every battle. He never defeated. He had never defeated and he's not going to be ever defeated. Hallelujah. So he looked up to God and asked help from God. Amen. Amen. So no wonder that Jehoshaphat became one of the greatest, most successful rulers for the for Judah. Because he knew God. Amen. He was godly. Amen. 
He was godly. He followed the commandments of God. So number one, if you want to be so powerful and be strong and be able to defeat the devil, to defeat the enemy, you must know your God. Who is your God? Now I believe that this country is so diverse in the ways that uh, the Indians have come with their gods. Chinese have come in with their gods. Jamaicans have come with their gods. Ghanaians have come with their gods. Nigerians have come with their gods. Uganda have come with their gods. Trinidad have come with their gods. All the nations of the world, if I'm not mistaken, I can say if we are looking for anybody from any part of the of the world, we will find one in this country. We are here with many gods but who is your God? Amen. Know your God that you serve. Know him. Know that he's faithful. Know that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly. Know that he's the one that created the whole universe. Know that he's the beginning and he's going to be the end. Know that he's the healer. Know that he's able to do all things. Know that he has overcome the world. He has overcome death. Know that he died and on the third day he rose back again. Know that he's able to heal the blind. Know that he's able to cause the, the cripple to walk. Somebody know your God. Can somebody say, I know my God. I know who I serve. Amen. So number one, know your God. Can you tell yourself, know your God. 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 Number two, eliminate obstacles in your life. Eliminate obstacles in your life. Put the points down and make sure you put them on the Facebook Put them, put them there. No, so number one, know what? Know your God. And this is the verse that we use, we used to our man to expand the word, know your God. The same, same, same chronicles. Uh, 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 chapter number what? Chapter number 20, verse what? Mm. Chapter number 20, verse what? Verse 3. Put it there. So know your God. We use Jehoshaphat here. And we came to realize that he knew the God that he was serving. He knows his God. So number two, eliminate obstacles in your life. And let me break this down. What do I mean by that? Get rid of things that are pulling your life backwards. Get rid of things that are pulling your life backwards. And now let's look at Hebrews chapter number 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter number 12, 1 and 2. Those who are very quick in typing and those who are quick in writing, make sure you put them on the Facebook, the comment button, so somebody can catch it up and read, and anybody can go back again and, 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 and recall or collect all these verses and, 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 then, and then read. Amen. Now, Hebrew chapter number 12, verse 1 to 2, Bible said, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Can somebody shout every weight? Every weight. Can say it like you mean it. Every weight. Every weight. And the sin which so easily ensnares you, ensnares us, ensnares you. Can put your name there. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen. Isn't this amazing? Look at this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our what? Of our faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here, you must sit down and, 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 and look into your life. What is holding your life backwards? If you need the power of God and you can do what is right at the sight of God, you are not going anywhere. You will cast demons and they will come back. 
You will shout on them, hey! And they will shout, they will shout back at you, hey, hey, hey! Are you here with me? So you, in order to move in power, to do things in power, you must look into your life and get rid of certain things. You need to figure out who are the, even the people and the things moving you backwards. There are some of you, friends, are not allowing you to move forward at all. Friends. Friends. You need to find out who and what are those things. I, 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 I get, get rid of them. Get rid of that friend. I'm not saying don't talk to her, but stop spending your entire time with a friend that you speak with on the phone, but you don't talk anything about God. But gossip. Somebody shout, I hear you. Don't be mad at me. I, I want to prepare you so that you'll be so powerful and strong in the Lord. And you'll be able to shout out at the demons and they will flee from you. We need to find out who and what those things are and get rid of them. Somebody say, get rid of them. Somebody say, get rid of them. Get rid of them. I don't, I don't care if that person is the one giving you $5,000 every week. Get rid of that person. I don't care. You need power. If you gain that power of God, you, you will you'll be able to make that, that money. That money. More than that. But somebody who is causing you to be stagnant, that you cannot be so strong in the Lord at all times. Be careful. Somebody say, be careful. Be careful. We all got something that is not beneficial to us at all. It does not help us. Can you say it doesn't help me? It doesn't help us. But Hebrews said here, let us lay aside every weight, meaning what you need to get rid of. Every weight. Every weight is what you have to get rid of. You might, talk, you might not understand. You might not understand. It might be sin. It might be something else. It might not be even a sin. But look at what is holding you backwards and get rid of it. Get rid of it. In order to receive the power of God, you need to get rid of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I get you, can I, can I give you a typical example that you can get rid of something? You yourself, you are battling with, with diabetes and every day you are buying chocolate, lint chocolate. You don't even buy the ordinary one. You buy the lint one, the most expensive and the most, the sweetest one. And you are battling with with diabetes and you're still asking God to deliver you and you are still eating that poison that is giving you, you causing your diabetes to rise mm. this is an example you eat something then you get a reaction you get something in your body it's like ruku, 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 and you are still eating that thing get rid of it get rid of it Somebody say, I'm getting rid of it from today. I'm getting rid of it from today. I say it like you mean it. I'm getting rid of it from today in the name of Jesus. Rid of it from today. If you want to become what God wants you to become, you have to overcome obstacles. Amen. Obstacles. Let me say in the Canadian way. Obstacles. Hey. Somebody shout, hey. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Bible said, lay aside every weight and the sin that is so easily ensnares us. Everybody has a sin that you are attracted to. Something that once in a while calls your name, you. Now you, 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 when you, anytime you see it, there's something in you that is a, something. Can someone shout sh something? Something. Someone may ask, how do you get over weight and the sin? Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is what? In the world. We serve a God that has power 
that if you let him rule inside, inside, inside of you, he will help you to overcome every sin. The problem is you have not given yourself totally to God. God. Some of you are waiting for the reverend, waiting for the pastor to lay hands on you for that sin or that desire to go, to go away. You are lying back. Listen to me. It is not going to happen that way. For a pastor just helping you that that sin will go away. Sin does not disappear like that. Thank you for saying no. You have to make a decision if you want Jesus or you want sin. You have to make a decision that the girls that you are, you are running after, you pick one of them and stop chasing two You have to come to make a decision in order for God to help you move forward. For in order for God to help you let some things leave you and go. Are you getting me here, church? So first, you have to decide. Decide. Decide and choose one. And the moment that you choose one, Bible said, God help those who are, who help themselves. So help yourself first and you see the Holy Spirit strengthen you. Amen. God, the problem is some of you, you are waiting for, you are waiting, you, <laughs> it, 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 it's so bad, you are waiting for a miracle, something to happen, so that sin you are in will, will, will stop. It is not going to be like that. You have to come to your, your, Come back to your senses and tell yourself, I, I'm, I'm putting a stop to this. And then you'll be able to stop it. Amen. Come on. Amen. If you think Holy Ghost is going to come to you so that you stop st stealing, stop fornicating, stop saying all this F word, stop doing the things that is not of God. Listen to me. It is not going to happen like that. You have to make a decision if you want Jesus or you want sin. Some of you also are waiting on God to send you a U-Haul truck. You know the U-Haul truck, the truck that you rent to move your stuff, eh? eh? To take all your problems away. That U-Haul truck will never come. It will never be here. It will never. Listen, it's not going to happen like that. You have to Give it up. Give it up. That girl, let that girl go. That stealing, let that stealing go. That fornication, let it go. Come back to your senses and choose one. Oh, I had so many girls chasing after me, but I came back to just pick one. I'm not ashamed. Big J, I'm not ashamed. Niger, Gezi, prophet, I'm not ashamed. That is why even ministers are fornicating because they cannot stop and choose one. Make up your mind if you need the power of God. God does not release his power of, upon anybody who just don't respect and, and, and follow his commandments. And don't let their miracles deceive them. Bible said at the day God was said, get out of me, you that did not do what I love. So that means God can give strength and power to certain people to run miracles, but he doesn't know them. Hey, I'm not going to allow God to use me and I, I, don't, I miss heaven. Oh, it will be a shame. It will be a shame that the same reverend who stood here and prayed with us, uh, miracles is happening. Do you have any idea? Even the 14 days that we started, people who are receiving their healing, receiving their miracles, uh, have been receiving phone calls and phone calls. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, when the trumpet sound, uh, God will tell me and say, get out of me. All this work that I have done for God to tell me this, no way. Come on. Somebody shout, no way. Don't let your 
is in Christ be wasted. Don't let your, your, your time in the house of God be wasted. Don't allow the enemy to keep you in something that God does not like. To move forward in God's power, you have to learn how to let things go. You have to throw away that cigarette. You have to throw away that ganja. You have to take that name away from that of your phone, your cell phone. Take that name out! Out! You have to unfollow certain people in the social media. There are some, some men, they go to social media to just look at things. I'm talking about the porn site. How are you going to get power? How? Tell me how. You are not. You don't respect anybody. You walk over people. You don't respect those that God has lifted to be leaders. Listen to me. Even those who don't respect me, I always pray for them. But some people will look at you and just despise you and think you are just nothing. Change your ways. Change. If you want God's power, this is, you have to, you, you, you have to learn, you have to learn and obey the commandments of God. Am I talking to somebody here? So to operate in the power of God, you must get rid of sin. Any sin, be sin. Any sin, not sin. Right, mama? In a sin, I be seen. Get rid of things. Let it go. Somebody shout, let it go. Or shout it like you mean it. Let it go. So, that was number two. What was number one? Oh, thank you. I have wonderful students here. Number two. Eliminate obstacles. What is number three? Oh, you are waiting for me. God bless you. God bless you. Number three. Number three. Watch this. Know that the battle is not yours. If you want God to fight or give you power to fight, don't fight on your own. Catch me. If you want God to win every battle, that comes your way. Don't rush to fight the battle. Know that every battle on earth is not yours, but it's what? It's the Lord. Can somebody shout, the battle is the Lord. It's not mine. Second Chronicles chapter number 20 verse 15. Take me to 15. Let's see what is there. 15. Bible said, and he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat that says the Lord to you do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but what? But God. Now take us back to maybe 13 so that uh, the children of God can understand. Run us back to 13. Here. Yeah. Now, Bible said when King Jehoshaphat received the message that three armies have come together to fight him. Bible said he called his people together and declare a fast like we are all doing today we are all doing 14 days of fasting and bible said when the people come together now here now all judah with their little ones their wives and their children stood before the lord then the spirit then the spirit then the spirit of the lord came upon who jahaziel the son of what zachariah the son of abenet the son of our jail, the son of our Matania, the Levite of the sons of Asra, and in the midst of the assembly, now take me to the 14, take me to the 14, take me to the 14, quickly, take me to the 14, take me to the 14, please, take me to the 14. 
It's there. Why are you telling me it's there? It's not there. Ah. Now you jump to, okay. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziah, the son of what? Zachariah, the son of what? And the son of what? Okay. We read this already, right? Okay, 15. My bad. I thought you took me, it was 13 I was reading before. Hey. Prof, I need to check my sight though. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and the inhabitants. Oh, you lost me. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you can help Jehoshaphat. Thou sayest the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but what? But God. So here, after Jehoshaphat have declared a fasting, and the people have come together, and they wanted to wait upon the Lord. Now the Spirit of God came upon somebody and then said, that sayest the Lord that the fight is not your fight this war is not your war it belongs to god why because jehoshaphat seek the face of god first so when any time that you go through battles and and you seek the face of god god must respond back to you god must talk to you hello god must answer every prayer any prayer you pray, God answer. So here was the answer of God. He said, the battle is mine. It is not yours. Hallelujah. So if you want to operate in the power of God, you must know that any time that you approach any battle, leave it into the hands of God and just pray. 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 Bible said, Moses reached at the Red Sea and then the sea, even the sound was so scary that the people, the children of Israel were crying. How are we going to cross this? Moses, tell us. How are we going to cross this? Moses, then take us back to Egypt. Let us go be slaves to the Egyptians. Hallelujah. Then Moses lifted up his eyes and talked to God. So anytime that man speak to God, man will fight. This was a big battle for Moses to fight. Then God spoke to Moses and said, what are you doing? There is something in your hands. So anytime that you face battle, God always releases his power in your hands. God always releases his anointing in your hands. So God was telling Moses that there's power in your hands. That it's about time that you fight with this hand. Now this hand is not going to be you, Moses, your hand. But it is going to be the hand of God. Just lift that hand and stretch it to the Red Sea. And you will see my power. I came to speak to somebody here. If you want to explain experience the power of God don't talk don't make any noise just lift up your eyes onto the hills and the most high God will speak and will cause your red sea to be departed somebody shout yes I hear you yes I hear you amen, amen. so you see God making doing wonder, wondrous things and people will think like, whoo, you are powerful. You see, the, the Israelites were thinking that Moses was so powerful. But Moses was powerless. It was God behind Moses. You and I, we know that we don't have any power. But if God is behind us, we are more than a conqueror. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? Yes. Amen. Can somebody shout, I hear you? I hear you. So the only thing that you must know and you must understand, the only language that the enemy understands is the power of God. And if you want to operate in this power, 
If you want to walk in this power, you must learn how to leave every battle that you face in life into the hands of God. Amen. Learn it. They insult you, you insult them back. God will run away. They talk to you, you curse them. God will run away. Because you are fighting your own battle. But when you shut up and walk in your closet and begin to call on to me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. I will show you enemy where the power lies. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Leave every battle in the hands of God. Leave it in his hands. And let him fight every battle. Don't fight your own battles. You will fail. You will fail. That is why many believers are failing. Many believers, you are ripped at all. We, have, we fail. It's like somebody who goes to the driving test and fails. When you come back, your face is like, It did not go well. But the Lord is good. You went one, you fail. You went two, you fail. But the third time, God stepped into your domain and he helped you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Leave every battle in the hands of God. So here, now we see clearly that somebody was touched by the power of God. And then the message came to Jehoshaphat and said, this battle is not yours, it's mine. Amen. Now let's move to the next one. We will get to the end of this story. So number one is what? Know your God. Oh, come on, students. Number one. Number two. Eliminate any obstacles. Prof, can you put it there for us? Yeah. Number three. The battle is not yours. Number four. Let's deal with number four here. You must know your spiritual weapons. You must know your spiritual weapons. If the enemy is fighting you and you pick a bass guitar and throw it on him, you have failed. If the enemy is fighting you, you pick a drumstick and you throw Throw it on your enemy. You have failed. I don't understand some men of God that they tell the church members to bring stones to church. Because today's service is anointed to kill the enemy. So they bring stones. Oh, don't look at me like that, mama. It's all over in Nigeria. I, I will... They bring stones to church. Some bring sticks. Some bring... I went to a church and... Uh, the pastor, this one is my own experience, okay? The pastor that came was a, a man of God that I respected so much and they were having a big crusade and they invited that um, prophet from Ghana. I came and the, the prophet came from Ghana with a big box and she said today, tonight is about unlocking and, and releasing the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you here with me? I said, yeah. So it came to a time that we are praying, the time that we started praying. The, the prophet opened the box and he gave us a big keys, eh? a wooden key. The, the carpenter is so crafty that he was able to design and cut a wooden key. And he gave everybody, he said, anybody who want to unlock your destiny, come with a hundred dollars, pick one of this, this um, wooden key to unlock your destiny. I beg your pardon. Since when God you started using wooden key to unlock miracles? Since when? Since when? Know your weapons. What are your prayer weapons? Your weapons is the blood of Jesus. Your weapons is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Your weapon is your prayer. Not your weapons. The other time I, I told you that was a praying with a young lady and I said, dip your hands in the blood of Jesus. She said, I dip my hands. Then she screamed, ah! That means there's fire in the blood of Jesus. Use that weapon. 
Know your weapon. Look at somebody and say, know your weapon. The blood of Jesus, the word of God, the fire of God. That is why you hear me here. You hear me on this platform. You hear me on this altar of God. The fire, the blood, the word is your weapon. Your weapon is not your insult. Your insult is powerless. Your weapon is the blood. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Someone shout, I hear you. Now let's look here. Second Chronicles, the same thing. Chapter 22, verse 20. Chapter 20, 22. 2022. We're almost there. Give you the four, the last one, then we pray. We are going to pray. 15 minutes strong prayer. Then we go home. Here, 22. Now here, look at this. The same story. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Manseer to start fighting among themselves. So now remember, remember, remember that a man prophesied to Jehoshaphat, Je 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 Jehoshaphat and said, God says the battle is not your battle. It is my battle to fight. So you and your people just lay ambush and see what I will do to this people. Now three armies have come together to fight one army. And Bible said this is what happened. At the time they started and realize they are ready to confront Judah or they started seeing themselves they were fighting themselves you see when you know how to use your weapon your enemies will your, your praise your worship the blood of Jesus the word of God that is in you will cause your enemies to fight themselves this morning I prophesy over you the one that wants you to be fired at your workplace may that person fight with your supervisor hey, I prophesy upon somebody's life this morning the one that wants you to be dead may that person die in the name of Jesus may they fight themselves the witches and the wizard in your household fighting against your destiny they want to mess you up they want to cut your life off they want to end your life may God cause them to fight themselves someone is short fight yourself fight yourself let them fight themselves amen so here now Josephus realized that the, the, the enemy is coming to him they are fighting themselves Amen. here they just started singing and worshiping and honoring God and then their enemies turn around to fight them own self sometimes any battle that confronts you just begin to worship Amen. just begin to honor God just begin to praise him just love him I'm giving you the, the last one, then we are done. Somebody shall we are done. Yeah. Number five, you must believe and not fear. Any battle that confronts any man, you, if, you are, if you want to move in the power of God, you must believe. Believe. Believe and not fear. Many Christians are, are, they are dead spiritually. Fear have killed them. Fear has killed them. Fear. 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 Jehoshaphat did not fear. Let's see something here. The same spot. Now give us verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. We are done. We are going to pray. The next 15 minutes ahead of us, we are going to pray like never before. 20. And early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of, of Tekoa. On the way, Joseph has stopped and said, Listen to me. Now, look at, look at Joseph. The man is speaking in authority now. But from the beginning, he was terrified. Do you remember? Oh, come on, come on, church. Do you remember? He was terrified from the beginning. But Bible said, my Bible tell me here. Now, early the next morning, the army of Judah went out with, to the wilderness. Into the wilderness of what? Of Tekoa. 
on the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me. Can someone shout, listen to me. Come on, say it like you mean it. Listen to me. Say it one more time. Listen to me. All you people of Judah and Jerusalem, all you people of worship center, listen to me. All you people in worship center, listen to me. Believe in the Lord your God. Oh, can someone shout, oh. oh. Shout it like you mean it. Oh. oh. He said, Jehoshaphat is telling his people, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his what? His prophets and you shall what? You shall prosper. So if you believe and not fear the power of God will come upon your life and whatever you declare shall come to pass whatever you say can, shall come to pass what you can, shall cause the mountain to move and the mountain will move you will cause the sick to be healed and the sick will be healed you will shout to the demons and the demons will flee am I talking to somebody this morning fear not just believe in the Lord God that you serve I'm done I'm done. Believe. Can somebody shout believe? believe. Or say like you mean it. Believe. Believe. Or shout it one more time. Believe. 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 Believe and fear not. Amen. If you stick with this word that I've been giving to you, I got up in the midnight, early in the morning, praying, meditating on this word, putting things together to make sure that you You've moved forward with power. If you stick with this word, nothing will become impossible to you. Amen. Tell him. Tell him. Now, I have put my total trust in God. And I don't care. If you come to me and say, Reverend, I'm sick, I'm tell, I'll, I'll tell you, you are going to be healed in the name of Jesus. I Amen. command that sickness to low in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whether you believe or you don't believe, I don't care. I believe that that sickness is going. Amen. That is why many of you are receiving healing and receiving your, your, your breakthroughs. Because I have believed that God is going to do it. Amen. Amen. Now stand on your feet and let's lift up prayer. We need power to move forward. Somebody said, power to move forward. Power to move forward. Power to move forward. Power to move forward. Begin to honor God. 